we actually got the patch notes for patch 1.13 and we are going to quickly read them. I actually tested with chat for the last two hours, plenty of changes, kind of blindly using the uh, frame data tools and stuff. And uh, so I have some knowledge about what exactly changed. That being said, let's see the patch notes. When it comes to the PvP exclusive balance adjustments, we got increased poise damage of normal attacks for the following weapon types. And it is basically the weapons from the DLC. And the entire idea is to actually increase uh, the poise damage to the volumes that are logical for patch 1.12, because these weapon classes were actually initially kind of created with mind of patch 1.0 when it comes to its poise values. So, make some story short, light great swords right now break in one, and they are going to be super fucking meta. Backhand blades are meta like crazy, crouch attack deals 145 poise damage, so yeah, breaking in one, the um, neutral R, uh, R1 when you have them paired actually also like deals like very decent damage. 100 only like deals 110. Uh, 138 I think on the neutral R1s when you hit both blades. Hand to hand arts are actually insane right now when it comes to its R2s. The running R2 is going to stagger you always with the initial hit. And then it's gonna true combo, yeah? Beast Claws seems just better, but still probably kind of dog shit. We're gonna see though. Increased poise damage of dual wield attacks for the following weapon types. Straight Swords, Thrusting Swords, ATC, ATC. So here is what From Software did, which is insane to me. From Software, actually, let me actually put the window like that, because I guess a lot of you getting blinded by the whiteness. So you have like a little bit of background here. So your eyes won't hurt you that much. Okay, back to the topic. The straight swords uh, essentially gonna break always in one. They are not getting memed on by a full bull goat anymore. Um, and essentially, it seems like every single, um, every single weapon type, like in the power stance, is right now stronger. It's funny they mention spears because maybe I just missed it, but. Uh, we are actually looking at right now, let's look by has changed, and okay, paired spears, let me see real quick, so, I didn't catch it initially, so as you can see here, the attack was 63 poise damage per every single uh, weapon, so yeah, like in total 100, and 26 was actually enough to meme on the on dual uh, spears and now well it breaks in one so yeah you have to strafe like it's still like only 70 poise damage so uh per one blade per one uh, per, per one spear so if you are going to strafe these attacks uh, then you still can trade and out-trade the, the pikes, yeah? So here is that. But yeah, pikes actually gonna break you in one with the running attacks, even if you're gonna poise stack. Anyway, back to the topic of the patch notes uh, or the, the website itself. Let's see what else. Uh, the katanas break in one and stuff. Um, there is a problem, for example, with dual katanas. The 100 moveset wasn't buffed whatsoever, so they are going to be still trash. Unfortunate. Uh, funny enough that like they do not mention here yet. Maybe they're gonna mention it later. Like thrusting swords actually break in one right now, not dual wielded, but like a one like two hundred thrusting sword literally deals one hundred and thirty five poise damage. So, GG. Like they nerfed clean rod to buff it the next patch, and it is literally like ultra best weapon in the game again, like better than ever because of 200 tally, but I digress. Increased poise damage of the Claws of Night. What? Okay, okay. Just, just let me, let me understand real quick. Let me, uh, so, uh, you want to tell me that 
This has increased poise damage. Ah, it's R2. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, oops. Sorry. Okay, let me. Um, so this one. Okay, but we have checked it. It's like from 23 to 29. And by the way, this this thing doesn't seem to be near then. We're gonna see how. Um, Mm, let me see what else. Um, decrease the backstep invulnerability uh, in window when... Uh, okay, so this is just like a backstep iframes. And uh, from that what I have seen, it's from 12 to 8, which means that like you cannot spam the bow uh, with the backstep for infinite iframes. And overall, the backstep iframes are... Well, less now. It's it's just weaker. Uh, feather talisman or the okay, got it. Uh, skills. Uh, so skills they actually decreased. The second hit of the follow up attack is now easier to land. Okay, just bigger hitbox probably. Decreased damage animation of the first attack against other players. Decreased damage animation. I think by damage animation, they just mean like. Stunt here. If that's the case, then this is worthless in PvP. It means that the initial attack won't combo in the follow up at all. GG. Like this, if 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 this is not like a mistranslation, then this shit is gone from PvP. Raging Beast decreased. Invulnerability window against other players' attacks. Okay, uh, Raging Beast is something that I literally never used. So I probably cannot really tell much. Maybe someone in chat can explain what they think about this change. Blind Spot. Decreased invulnerability window against other players' attacks. This is interesting. Because we actually checked the blind spot initially, and it seemed like there was no change whatsoever. But since it is only in PvP, according to what From Software is saying, then actually it might mean it's going to um, well, uh, it's going to actually be fair now. So look, this is basically instant iframes that. Um, sphere around your character is your iframes and this is basically how it was initially like from the very release of the game so this question is what they meant by decreased iframes because preferably blind spot shouldn't have any iframes at all palm blast decrease poise ammo generated when charging this skill so you don't have infinite poise or nearby infinite poise when you are charging that thingy. I don't know if I like it, honestly. We're gonna see how it's going to play out. A decreased invulnerability window against other players' attacks. That's very interesting that Miriam's vanishing getting fucking PvP nerf because it wasn't that good in PvP. I mean, it was just viable tool. That's... That's kind of us. Knight's Lightning Spear, increased attack power of the initial Lightning Spear, decreased attack power of the spears launched after the first one. It, okay, listen, this is... This is good. Decreased poise damage of all spears generated by the spell, but the main problem is tracking. So if someone doesn't know like what this spell is, like you actually throw one Lightning Spear, and after that, it follows up with 4 or 6, depending if you're gonna charge it or not. But the further, like, spears after the initial one, like, they, they just had insane tracking. And, like, tracking nerfs would be way better. Maybe they also nerf tracking. We, we, have, to, we have to see. Sometimes, like, they do not mention everything in the patch notes. General balance adjustments. Increased damage animation of the light greatsword charge attacks against enemies, other than players. Wait, increase damage animation. Damage animation yet again, it's just a poise damage. Other than players, so for me it doesn't matter because yeah, I don't play PvE. 
But like for PvE folks, that's a good change. Increase the stat status of the following NPCs that can be summoned in some areas. What? What? Why you are buffing fucking NPCs, dude? Oh, this is so fucking frustrating, man. Holy shit. This bitch has like 30,000 HP. This one has like 40. Oh, sorry. The, the alarm. Like, holy shit. Dude, what the... F dude, why you... Won't you work on their AI? Like, they are stupid as shit. Increasing their stats beyond Oblivion is not the play, man. Ah, uh, okay, whatever. I'm, I'm getting upset way too fast. Maybe it's not that bad. Increase the attack power and damage negation of summon spirits, excluding the mimic tier. Okay, so general buffs. Increase the attack power and negation of the spirits, excluding mimic tier for the plus eight. Okay, good. Armament. Increased attack power scaling when upgrading the following armaments and uh, repeating. Oh! What? Spread crossbow got buffed. <laughs> okay, let's go next. Shield of Night. Um, increased damage negation and blocking physical attacks. Euphoria. Um, euphoria. Euphoria. Actually, I have no idea how you how you read like that one. Okay, it doesn't matter, but uh, that's that's the chargeable, um, uh, chargeable uh, twin blade. Increased holy damage when the weapon has its luster restored. It decrease the number of attacks required. Okay, that's overall buffs. That's pretty cool in PVE, most likely. Okay. Increase the duration of the Luster Restoration effect. Nice. Golden Lion Shield. Increase Guard Strength. Okay. Golem Fist. Added a damage hitbox to the hand portion of the ranged fist attack. Oh, so it didn't have it before. Okay, that's a good change. So let me actually show you real quick. So this is how it looks like. You see, like this hitbox appears like big as hitbox appear now. It wasn't the case before, so it might be, because previously it was only like, this hitbox was only the case, like a small hitbox on the flying golem fist. It was like, appearing initially and, and, and that's that's about it. So, honestly, it might be just a better weapon now, I have to try it, I have to give it a try. Initially I thought when I was testing, without knowing that information that they added this hitbox that like nothing changed, but apparently it well, there is indeed a change and it might be quite significant. So, Great Hammer, Smith Script once, increased poise damage of the swing, okay. Spread crossbow, decreased the generated status buildup when used with bolts that have status effects, okay. So, it seems like this thing got actually nerfed. It has more base damage, but... Mm, oops, I... Messed up. So, yeah, as you can see, it still, like, generates pretty much the same ammo of the projectiles, but, like, the status effect is capped. So that's cool. That's a good change. Like, depends... De depends how much, though. Ailment, talisman, after the one set of the status ailment, uh, the status build-up or duration of said ailment will now also be reduced immediately by a certain amount. Okay. Alright, so they nerfed this tally. It, it was very strong, so I guess it's fine. Increased focus resistance. Oh! On the horn charm, they increased the focus resistance? Really? That's That was actually very good already. Like, interesting. Is in the buff? You mean on the ailment? Maybe I misunderstand something. Well, if that's the buff, like then then you're gonna figure it out, I assume. All right, skills. Uh, Savage Lion's Claw increased attack power and poise damage of the first attack. Uh, 
Okay, that's weird. So they increased it only in PvE, but made it worse in PvP. I this is what I understand looking at these patch notes. Um, okay, Swift Slash. Reduced movement distance when using the skill. Extended recovery uh, time. Okay, so it says that like uh, they actually decreased the, the 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 move distance. I honestly don't really see it. I was comparing it, uh, so maybe it was it's not like decreased by a lot. That being said, there is like um, extended recovery time is another thing that is mentioned. What is not mentioned here is actually the change in animation. So, initially, when you was starting the uh, entire like animation of the thingy, you basically was dashing in and the AoE effect after you like was immediately getting like spawned and it was following you. But right now, it works the other way around. Only after you're gonna finish your animation and you have no hitbox on the blades of the Swift Slash, the AoE effect appears and goes backwards, as you can see. So, yeah, it's it was actually changed in such way. In such way. I think it's Uncharge only, maybe it's Uncharge only. But yeah, it's... Uh, so, essentially, yeah, like... Uh, it's they essentially change the way how Swift Slash kind of works. Um, overhead stance increased attack power against enemies other than players. Okay, so PVE buff. Uh, aspects of the Crucible Wings increased attack power. Okay, just buffs. Uh, light speed slash. What is that? I'm not sure what is light speed slash. The additional light attacks are now affected, affected by the attack power and ability scaling of the weapon. Radan weapon. Ah, the jump one. Okay, I see. It's it's the question is if that's like a, the I uh, know the slash so it's the horizontal one yeah the good one. Hmm. Twin slash. Okay, like I, I'm getting like multiple. Answers here, here, the light one. Okay, so the good one. Okay, I kind of wonder. The additional uh, light attacks are now affected by the attack power and stuff. So it's just like a damage buff. Rancor slash. Um, it's like kind of whatever, honestly. Increased attack power of the venge vengeful spirit. So skull emojis. Increased stamina damage. Okay. Revengers Blade increased directional control for a follow-up attacks after a strong attack. Revengers Blade is what? It is this thingy? No, it is not, not sure what is Revengers Blade on SD Falks. Okay, so Falks got actually right to increase the directional control for the follow-up. So in PvP at least follow-up doesn't really matter at all. So this thing is just unchanged. It's still freaking Ferrari. Okay. Orn Calling. Increased attack power against enemies other than players. Horn um, Calling Storm. Increased attack power against enemies other than players. Okay, so in PvE, the AoE has a freaking buff now. I don't have it on me right now. It doesn't really matter at all. It's like, I'm not sure if it's going to be good in the PvE anyway. Wheat Cutter. Wheat Cutter is essentially an Ash of War of Rakshasas. And yeah, it's faster now. And it's kind of ridiculous that it's faster. <laughs> it was like, it's, it's actually gonna be viable right now. Like, Great Katana's eating good this patch. They, they got like an overall poise damage buffs and so on. So yeah. Which, by the way, was it mentioned up there? I am not sure. But it wasn't mentioned. Like, the Great Katanas got the poise damage, but they did. And right now, Great Katanas are so good that essentially uh, they uh, won't be losing trades against... Um, CGS anymore, curved great sword. So look, like previously, 
you were dealing 178.2 poise damage, and now you do 300 on the neutral attacks, and also including crouch attacks and so on. So yeah, um, right now, when the CGA is gonna try to trade with you, they are gonna be actually losing. They are not going to be hyper-armoring for your attacks. It's actually interesting that they, f like, do not list everything. Oh well. Uh, Romina's Purification increased poise value when using this skill. So this is uh, the funny um, scythe uh, uh, kind of... No, wait, is, is it is that one? Wait, maybe it's not that one. Romina's Purification, maybe that's something else. It's Rod Halbert. Ah, it's, 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 it's a bad. Okay. All right. So that thingy actually w didn't get any hyper armor, but it got increased poise damage. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not sure. Here it is. I'm gonna. So this is this skill. It just deals more poise damage now. Okay, that's pretty cool. And on which one? Uh, overall poise um, volume. So m m both the butterflies, I assume too. Good, like this, this uh, Ash definitely needed a buff. Mm, red uh, Bear Hunt increased attack power, increased poise value, okay. Uh, Rancor shot. Decreased status build up generation when used with arrows that have status effects. Okay, that's a good buff. If someone doesn't know, we are talking here about Bone Bow. It is like. Super cancerous ash because yeah it has insane tracking. Um but uh, well honestly even by just hitting target with regular arrows it is ultra freaking broken. So I don't think it is going to do much overall. Like I mean instead of applying the freaking status effects, in such case you can just use like Arrows that deal additional poise damage. That is Stormwing, yeah, these. And it's going to be, yeah. It's gonna be, like, still quite cancerous to deal with, I assume. That's a shame. I mean, we're gonna see. Maybe, maybe, like, this buff actually gonna make the whole world of difference. Or maybe not everything was listed like usually it is. Repeating fire attack. So this is the, for the crossbow, yeah? That, that deals, like sends bazillion projectiles at once, adjusted attack power to compensate for increase in weapon damage. So it's slower now, interesting. Uh, I assume it would be. Feeble Lords, Frenzied Flame, Reduced Frenzy status effect build up against enemies. Okay. Uh, revenge... Wait. Reduced... Wait, is that like... The the torch or what? No, it's not the torch. The, the ash was called differently. It is Nanaya torch. It is. Okay, so torch just got nerfed. I see. Okay, revenge of the night. I'm not sure what is that one either. Increased poise damage and attack power when the skill is used immediately after guarding against an enemy attack. I am actually not sure. Do you chat no, perhaps? Revenge of the Night? What is the... Night Shield. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Alright, so the Night Shield is stronger now. I never actually honestly use it. I have to give it a try. Spells. Green Blade Trio increase attack power, so you are spawning these things just stronger now, by damage-wise. Interesting. Blades of Stone. Honestly, I won't have that much to say here besides on the... Uh, impenetrable thorns because I don't use most of these. I do not have like a mage build yet for the DLC. Blaze of Stone is that just attack power of the first, second, and third charge attacks. What is Blaze of Stone, gamers? Which weapon is that? Or w uh, sorry, which spell is that? Like, what does that look like? Increased attack power of the non charge attacks. Guy spell. Ah, okay. Increased attack power of the. First hit of the charge attack and reduced attack power of the second and third hit. Increase attack range and attack speed. All right. Glintstone nails. Increase attack power and improve enemy tracking. 
Glintstone Nail and Nails. Okay. Uh, impenetrable Thorns. This is what everyone is waiting for, I assume. All generated Impenetrable Thorns will no track... And ne... What? You fucking buff it? <laughs> Decrease attack power and poise damage. Okay. Decreased the... Um, okay, the, the bleed build up and stamina damage against guarding enemies. Okay. So, make some story short, gamers. Let me um, get myself the... Oh, where is... Did I, did I miss it? Oh, no. Here it is. Okay. So... Kind of looking the same. Goes the same range and stuff. It now like the turns, like all of them gonna track. Which I don't know what to think about. We're gonna have to see how it works like in practice. It's probably overall nerf, but also like considering how far it goes, it's just gonna be shitters uh, set up for ganks and it's gonna be like powerful like crazy. Rings of the Spectral Light. Um, K, increase the attack power and frostbite status, build up vortex of the thingy, increased attack power and frostbite. Okay, cool. That's, that's good. Like, that's the thingy that, like, you, you swing around with, with funny CGS. Alright, anyway, incantation. Uh, minor air 3 got actually increased. Uh... HP re recovery, another shitters. Um, <laughs> incantation, amazing. Land of Shadow, improved enemy tracking. Uh, Watchful Divine, Beast Tornado. Um, increased it, okay. I kind of wonder, it, it was kind of shit since the release. The tornado will be less likely to disappear to the collision of the terrain, nice. Enemies hit by the tornado will now be launched upwards. It can be potentially such a fucking meme. Man. Rain of Fire buffed. The attack power buffed reduced the interval between each hit. Oh, that's cool. I mean, this is ultra shit. I'm not sure if it can it can be helped. We're gonna see. Uh, Roar of the Rugella. I, no one is using that shit. Furious Blade of... Okay. Increased attack power? What? The? It's, it's that thingy that goes forward and auto tracks. I am not sure if that's good for the game, but who knows? We're gonna see. Rotten butterflies increase the scarlet build up, like reduce the interval. Okay. Ashes. Wandering noble. Wait. Ah, okay. Spirit ashes. Those are like buffs and nerfs to spirit ashes. I'm gonna scroll it slowly so you guys can just like eventually look at it on your own, all right? Like, so this is first page or like this is another one. Increased HP, physical attack power and fire attack on the Warhawk, lol. Another one. Another one. Oh, sorry. Another one. That's so many of them. Godric soldier will no longer stagger as easily. Okay. Another one. Oops. This freaking website. Uh, another one. And yet another one. Holy shit, like, they buffed everything, man. Okay, and that's it. Uh, okay. Bug fixes. Oh, man. That's the moment. The moment of sadness for many of you. Okay. Change the default selection of the OK slash cancel prompt that shows up when using the spectral steed whistle while the spectral steed is dead the default selection position is now okay actually buffed to seamless co-op invasions unironically adjusted the placement of npc summon signs in the certain boss fight areas 
Change the NPC summon signs in certain boss fights to allow the user to summon NPCs simply by pressing the action button once. Wow, actually cool adjustment. Fix the bug where the damage of some normal attacks of the Dark Moon Greatsword were lower than intended. What? L were like lower? What do you mean lower? They were higher? Unless they weren't? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to test it at some point. Uh, fix the physical attack attribute menu display of the Warpick weapon. Okay, fix the bug where some attacks of the Swift Spear weapon were different than expected in terms of power damage. Okay, good. Swift Spear actually got buffed with uh, when it comes to its poise damage, like pretty much anything in the game. So that's pretty cool to see. I really wanted to use this spear, but it was just too weak. Fix the bug that prevented the Twin Blade Talisman from uh, affecting the perfume bottles, okay? Fix the bug where the physical attack attributes of some attacks of the Trusting Shields weapon type were different than expected. Never had this bug. Fix the bug that allowed use of the arrows, great arrows, walls that should not be usable for the uh, following weapon types. Light bows, long bows, great bows, crossbows, ballistas. So this is actually great. Uh, you had a glitch that allowed you to essentially use um, the, um, for example, um, oh, let me actually, because it's visually now looking the same. So, you could use the golem's great arrows on the bow by just jumping, clicking R1 into R2 or vice versa. And now it's not the case. So you cannot really shoot the golem's great arrows with the jump attacks from the regular bow anymore, which is good. It's just very, very good change. And yeah, fix the bug where the effect of the increasing the power of the incantation, Light of Michaela, or Secret of the Light helmet was not applied correctly. I didn't know that. Fix the bug that caused FP consumption when using the... Uh, Unending dance skill while not meeting the ability requirements. Uh, okay, I wonder if they fixed animations because those were fucked. Fix the bug where the physical attack attribute of some attacks of the deadly dance skill was different than expected. Fix the bug where the uh, physical attack attribute of the uh, scatter shot throw skill of the close of night weapon was different than expected. I never had this issue. Fix the bug where the following skills did not change correctly when performed with or without FP. Dynastic Sickle play, Raging Beast, okay. So, uh, okay. Just fixes. At, uh, essentially, honestly, most of these are not that great, so I personally didn't have experience with this match. Fix the bug that caused certain skills to perform differently than expected. Oh, this is it. Yeah, that's uh, important information for everyone here. So chainsaw glitch after years is actually... Uh, yeah, it's gone. So you cannot like... You essentially get in the prompt very very quickly. So, of the backstep, the chainsaw glitch is, like, it's gone. It's no more. It is absolutely freaking dead. Um, yeah, it would be like that. There's, like, shit tons of other glitches. Like, people immediately found out different ways to, to cast, for example, Radan version of the chainsaw with the bolus swap and stuff. But the chainsaw on its own, like, the Serpent Hunter, outside of the Reichardt's uh, area, doesn't have its like special properties um so it means that the chainsaw as we know is dead it's gone so right now if you want to beat um griefers with some sort of glitch then you gotta have to for example utilize the leda sword like leda sword with the use of the eclipse shotel can actually still be uh, bolus swapped so here is a thing like this you can actually uh, apply the um, dev blight with this 
and even through the iframes. So yeah, it's it's going to be one of the ways to combat griefing shitters that have no hands and couldn't chainsaw earlier. And no, they won't be able to do that glitch as well. So yeah. Uh, there is still ways to combat griefers. It's just like chainsaw is gone. Thank you, Muggle. Muggle podkreślenie this just subscribe. I, I'm going to skip the alert for now. Um anyway, um where we finished. I'm sorry, I kind of lost the track. Okay, this is this one. So now Fixed a bug that prevented some spells incantations can be used in the air from being used in the air under some conditions. Okay, so listen, this, this is a fix to a chain casting. Fixed a bug that caused the golden arcs incantation to generate attacks lower than the cast with the left hand. Oh, I didn't know that. Interesting. Fixed the bug where the rain of fire incantation sometimes did not hit enemies. Oh, interesting. I didn't know it was bugged. Fix the bug where the Furious Blade of Ansbach incantation did not apply uh, the, the bleed status buildup. Okay, fix the bug where under some circumstances the move distance when casting some spells incantations was different than expected. Uh, I'm not sure what does that mean. Well, I'm gonna have to see in the practice, I guess. Uh, fix the bug that sometimes interrupted the cast of the roar of... Okay, that, that thing like no one uses, and probably no one will. Fix the bug where the ch uh, Cherishing Fingers magic attack sometimes did not hit. Uh, fix the bug where the behavior of the Mimic Tear spirit when casting spells, incantations... Okay, just AI fixes. These ones we really need because Mimics, mimics overall, like the, the Ashes, Spirit Ashes are stupid. As freaking crazy man. Fix the bug where NPCs could be summoned when the maximum number of co-op multiplayer members has been reached. Interesting. Fix the bug that caused some items to display different icons than expected. Fixed a bug where exiting the game or going through the loading screen immediately after defeating uh, the Emir could make the blah 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 blah. Okay. Uh, fix the bug that prevented the player from performing critical hits on some enemies. Okay. It is not said here if that's multiplayer related. But maybe, just maybe, it's the freaking fix to like latency criticals where you just straight up deal no damage to someone that rolled out on their screen. If that's the case, that's it's fucking great. It would be amazing. Fix the bug in which some attacks on certain enemies were interpreted differently than expected. Uh, fix the bug that prevented rune gains when defeating some enemies. Fix the bug that prevented some enemies from working properly under certain circumstances. Very interesting explanation. Fix the bug where the multiplayer area borders were different than intended in some areas. Thanks fucking god, dude. Like, the, the DLC multiplayer borders are so dog shit. I wonder if they are going to actually, like, make them work somewhat like in the vanilla. Because, like, you being teleported out of the bounds was the constant bullshit in DLC. Fix the bug where the player would spawn in different places than intended when Vader... In oh my god, imagine they actually fixed freaking spawns. They probably didn't. Fix the bug in the map menu that caused some NPC icons in the realm of shadow to not display properly. Fix the bug in the design of the map uh, realm of shadow and the map fragment icon. Fix the bug where some cutscenes were not displayed. F uh, fix the bug where some sound effects did not play cor correctly. Uh, okay, bug some effects were not displayed correctly. Several performance improvements and other bug fixes. Steam only. Fix the bug where the anti-alias in quality okay, uh, was unintentionally set to high. That's since fucking release, man. Correction of the end credits, okay. Possible unstable performance fixes. For the PS5 version of the game, unstable frame rate might be improved by using the rebuild database, okay. In some PC versions, ray tracing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, PC version, the massive, uh, uh, the message inappropriate activity detected is whatever, like fixed. 
to fix this issue, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, in the PC version, unstable frame rate might be caused by the third uh, party application that control mouse behavior. Activating this will help, okay. Uh, regulations, blah, blah, blah. Online play requires the players to apply, blah, 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 blah. What we are lacking here is the classical information about uh, s multiplayer stability improvements that actually never did anything. <laughs> uh, s still no six player limit, no mention about Thunderstone, but I guess I'm just gonna go uh, test this patch right now. Meanwhile, thank you a lot for watching, gamers on YouTube, and yeah, I see you on the live streams and in the future videos. Overall, well, patch like the patch. Some good, some bad.